search engine is much better than Yahoo. They probably use theirs to figure out that Canada doesn't have states. I think the only reason why I use Yahoo is they have news. Google's just Google. Oh, what's Kim Kardashian <laughs> doing this week? Hey, I, w- I listen to pop news shows. Oh my god. I keep, I, I keep way up to date on the going-ons of celebrities than most people know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so, so talk us in. Oh, me just... Yeah, I, 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 thought, I always do the intro. I thought me just having my little rant there about how Yahoo News can't even use their own search engine to figure out that Canada doesn't have states and has provinces and territories, but, you know, when you run your own search engine and you can't even be bothered to double-check your fucking... Re- your content, why even bother? Just I know that? we don't, but wouldn't you feel really bad if it turns out we had a state and we didn't know? No, I wouldn't. Sort of that. like, like uh, a, a Puerto Rico of Canada. Or, uh, you know, the, the the territories of the U.S. Like, I wonder if we have anything like that. I don't think we do. It's like that random island in the... In the middle between Greenland and... No, I was going to say that there's a little island in Central America that France owns. Oh, yeah. Like, I bet a lot of people don't know that. I mean, there's that little island <laughs> just, like... Off the shore of Denmark, not uh, not Denmark, Green, Greenland and uh, Nunavut or Kalawit. Well, th- those are both right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> One is just the capital. Yeah. Um, and it, and there was this m- war that was fought for it, that's still raging to this day, called the Whiskey War. Oh, I thought that was the one where they just, uh, anytime someone's in the area, they just change the flag that's flying. And then they usually leave some booze. Yeah. And then I was... That's saying, how you wage a war. That's how you wage a war. You just <laughs> take down each other's flag and then leave a little pre- leave, leave a little present. Well, and, and I, was, I was thinking Newfoundland, but I was like, because I got that screech, but that's Newfoundland. No, they usually leave Canadian dry. Or, that's good. Or Canadian... It won a, it won a whiskey's best in the world last year. So let's and then see. Denmark or Denmark leaves. I don't remember what ben, Denmark leaves. I was gonna say vodka, but that doesn't sound right. No, Whenever it's the whiskey war. Yeah, it's, it's probably more whiskey. Yeah. Shitty Denmark whiskey. So we yeah. keep saying Denmark. It's Greenland. <laughs> well, no, but Greenland is governed over by Denmark. This is news to me. Apparently. I don't pay a lot of attention to either of those places, so... It's really neat. It's it's the only war that Canada is currently waging that is non-violent. Oh, so far. I, I was going to say, I was like, because we're, we're in the Middle East. I was like, we're, we're at war. Hmm. Sort of. So how was your week? Just had to take a swig of my drink. Uh, pretty, pretty uneventful. Uh, I will say... I guess for our Canadian and American listeners, because for this one weekend alone, it's kind of nice that the two holidays line up. Happy Canada Day! Uh, we're you know one fifty, big big one five zero, and a happy happy American Pride Day. Uh, I don't know how old that country is. Older? That's all I know. Older than one fifty. Uh, but, no, I didn't do anything, like, crazy of note this week. Uh, it's pretty much the same old from, from last year, actually. Or, not last year, last week. I, you know, I didn't really play any new games. Didn't really... Didn't, didn't really do a whole lot. Had a social life this week. I guess that's a, that's a bit of a change of pace. Oh? I went, well, I was out last night, and I was out the night before that, and... Which two nights in a row like this? That's un- that's unheard of for me. <laughs> two nights in a week, let alone two nights in a row, is unheard of. Um, no, the only uh, two things of note that I'll touch on is uh, I was reading uh, Batman and Elmer Fudd crossover. Uh, anyone who wants to pick up a comic, fucking pick that up. It's so good. It has no reason being that good. And, and the other thing is, I. Uh, I'm still, like, I still don't love 
VR. Like, I, I wish I did. But I just don't own a ton of games for it, so I just don't use it that much. Yeah. But when a good game comes out, especially this one that I played this morning, it was free. I'm like, this is why I bought this. Like, the the great experiences I've had in VR are, like, pretty scattered throughout the, the, the months. But each one of them, I'm like, oh, this is why I bought this thing. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming has a little, like... It's only like five or six minutes. It's not very long. Mm-hmm. But, oh man, I was having a ball. Because you just got your web juniors, and I was like grabbing crates and throwing them up in the air and then using my other hand to swing them around. And, oh, it was just oh, it was good, now, good time. You know in the movies, mm-hmm. when they do that first person kind of shot of his just his forearm and he's doing like this, he's doing the Spider-Man web shooty. Yeah gesture Mm -hmm. did it have was it just all that yeah it was great i'm sorry but those are the most laughable parts in movies (laughs) like every time well yeah no in a a movie it's dumb but in in vr was um okay so the first like i said it's just like a quick little experience you go through a target range to learn like the controls yeah it's just motion controls and then there's like a quick little thing with vulture but there's two transitions that i was like this experience could have been just these two things. I would have been happy with it. There's a part where they're like, oh shit, like there's something up in the sky. Go take a look. And you just, you like point your arms up in the air, uh, shoot your webs at a crane, and you have to like do the gesture of like pulling, pulling yourself up. up. And a lot of VR games kind of black out and just kind of flash point you up there. You actually shoot up. And I was like, this was worth the whole experience. And then later you just do a, like a swing around a building. I was like, that's it. I was like, that's all I needed. I was like, that was dope. I don't care. Uh, Did you so look down fun. while you were... Yeah. In like, is it the best graphics? No. But no. I, was, I was pretty lost in the moment. I was having a good time. And like, one part the crane starts falling apart. And like, I, I'll, bl- I'll put this on immersion. Because I was like, it, to me it felt like I was struggling to hold this crane together. Well, because, like, it helps... It's, like, fake resistance. The uh, the motion controllers will vibrate during tension and vibrate more and more and more when you're having more and more tension. So I'm sitting there, like, doing these gestures of, like, trying to hold this crane together, and I was just like... This... This is VR. This is fucking great. Now, if they could make... Even just an hour or two of experiences that strong sold but right now they've only been able to like hit it out of the park in five minute chunks uh uh what about you that's because that, that's it for me uh not a whole lot what a surprise yeah it's almost like i don't do anything with my life <laughs> um i don't know animes are starting to wrap up so i uh and so far, not a whole lot has been catching my eye. Like, a few have started up again mm-hmm. for the summer season, and I just, I haven't really been interested in them. Oh. Uh, Little of Witch Academia mm-hmm. was on start, was put on Netflix. Haven't watched that yet. Um... I've just been kind of derping around in Grand Theft Auto, mm-hmm. and still playing. I started a new character in Dark Souls. Is is this new from last week, or is it still the new one from last week? Because you started one last week too. Yeah, yeah. No, it's mm-hmm. that one. Instead of going straight for the great sword, I was like, that caused some problems. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, I was kind of squishy. So when I got hit, I got hit hard. Yeah. And I was like, maybe I should see about a shield and heavier <laughs> armor. I was such a, a baby. Well, like, because now that Dark Souls is kind of like in the know, oh. it wasn't really in the know when the first game came out. Like, it wasn't this huge thing. It, like, it was popular, don't get me wrong, but... It was kind of like an underground yeah. popular, though. I barely understood the stats, because uh, at the time I was the only person I knew 
playing them. And I would always... Because I was like, I, I want a good weapon, a good strong weapon that I can two-hand, but I also like to run. So I just ran around with a two-hand sword, two-handing it uh, with no armor. So I had no equip load, so I could run and everything. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, my first playthrough, I had the Undead Legion's armor. And then I had that ultra great, just the great sword. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get a lot of things down, but the problem came when it was any sort of, uh, during the faster enemies that could kind of do large chunks of your health in a short, like just short little bursts, they kind of fucked me up. So, uh, not, not a ton of news this week. Um, that's usually how it is post E3. There's a bit of a lull for yeah. a little bit. Uh, one quick thing that I just, like, it's not, it's sort of out of our rehearse, but it really made me laugh this week, is, uh, obviously Spider-Man Homecoming had, like, its big premiere. It's not out yet. It's not out until this week for us. But, uh, I know, I didn't know Hannibal Burris was in the movie, but I guess he is. Um, funny, funny comedian. Okay. And, uh, he, I don't know if he didn't like the movie or hates red carpets, but he didn't want to go, which is pretty strange. Usually if you're in a movie, you would go. Yeah. Uh, so he hired a stunt double to go in his place. And here's how much he doesn't give a shit. The guy looked nothing like him. <laughs> like it fooled nobody. nobody. And I was like, that's amazing. Like, to hire a stunt double, I'd be like, that's a funny story. But to give such little shit about the red carpet that you don't even care if the person looks like you, I was like, I, I gotta applaud that. Um, let's see. There, there's really... So there's some Sony news, and then there's the big Nintendo news, but we can we can spawn off that later. So I'll save that for the end. So the first one, and I'm... I'm kind of excited about this is sony started a new thing called playstation emerging filmmakers program which means sony has basically opened their doors and said pitch us a show um like so open that i could email them if i wanted to oh so i'm excited about that i mean we wouldn't see anything that comes from this for years but that basically means like hey we're we realize we're in kind of a rut of, like, other than Spider-Man, which is not fully their movie, their next movie is the Emoji movie. So, they're like, we need, we need new things. And now, this doesn't mean they'll be based off Sony properties, but if there is someone out there who's like, I've got a great idea for one of your games to turn into a movie, or turn it into a show... Maybe we'll One see some games. Of Sony makes games. Sony makes games. Sony has the most first-party oh. studios of every of anybody. I was thinking about Sony Pictures. Oh well, it's the same company. Sony owns Sony Pictures and and PlayStation. Okay, no, I had a brain first <laughs> thinking about something else. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, but yeah, there's really not much more to that. I may actually, in all honesty, try and reach out to them. What would you pitch? That show that didn't go through at work. Which show is that? Well, I never told anybody. I kept a secret. Oh, yeah. But I, I had a meeting to pitch a show, and they're like, hey, is it this genre? I was like, nope. And they're like, well, then we're not taking it, because this is what we're looking for. I was like, well, all right, I'll come back later. Uh, now you probably saw a, a touch of the story because uh, Jim Sterling did a did a story on it, and that is how I picked it up. But there's more to the story than just his video. Okay. Is Have it... you heard of the game Five Star One Thousand Top Rated? Yeah. Okay, so it's this new thing. Uh, basically, you pay like a dollar or something, and you get trophies. Yeah, it's like eighty three cents in the U S. and it's like a dollar something here. Um, it's very cheap, 
and it, uh, okay, so, the game is being, when I looked into the game, it's not quite what it's being accused of, so it's being accused of buying trophies. Yeah. Which I was like, yeah, that's not When great. you get a trophy for starting the game. It's not the only game that's done it. Okay, uh, okay I saw the opposite. Uh, the guy who made uh, the Katamari games made a game on the PS3 that was, uh, in my opinion, not good. But it's called Nubby Nubby Boy. Um, you got a trophy for quitting. <laughs> which is arguably worse. Because they're like, we know people are not going to stick around. Yeah. Um, so I was under the assumption that there was no game. It's literally you buy things, you boot up the game, and you get trophies. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. There is actual game. Barely. It's a puzzle game. Like, it's literally... Well, yeah, but it's a dollar. If you like... So the game is just slide puzzles. If you like slide puzzles, which I'm sure someone does. Like, they're not my thing. But I'm sure someone actually enjoys slide puzzles. There's a slide puzzle game for a dollar on PlayStation. Well, there's not anymore because the, the latest update is they took it off the store. Good. But I, I don't think it deserves as much heat if it's you're getting. If you're the game, don't use stock images. Well, well the company that put it, put it out is like a, a wallpaper site. So that's why they had all those stock images. But no, do, do I think the game is dumb? Yes. But I don't think you can say it's buying trophies. Because there was a game and you had to complete the game to get the trophies. Now, granted, the Facebook page and everywhere you bought the game came with a walkthrough on how to do all of the puzzles. Because that's what they wanted it to be. They wanted you to just get a... a it was like, it was being touted as the world's fast, fastest platinum, so if you followed the walkthrough, you could get it in 20 minutes. Yeah. But, I don't know, I, I didn't think it was that bad. Like, there is at least an actual game there. It's a bad game, it's a stupid game, but there is game. And technically, you can follow a walkthrough for any game. That shouldn't, that doesn't make it less of a game, it's still a game. It's your choice to uh, follow a walkthrough or not. But... Before it was pulled from the store, someone tweeted out that, you know, it's garbage. And, yeah. like, I can't argue, it is it is garbage. And Sean Layden, the CEO of Sony America, liked the tweet, which tells me they've at least finally caught on that the PSN has turned into Steam Greenlight, and uh, maybe they'll fix it. And taking that game off was the first step, but as far as I know, Life of Black Tiger is still on the PlayStation Network, so we'll see. There's still, still room to grow. Uh, I get, I get a new story for you that you'll like. Now I found this out on the way over because this story just eluded me throughout the week. Uh, I wrote down this man's name. I don't know if it'll ring a bell to you. It did for me. Like I was like, I know that name. I don't know where. Does the name uh, Drew Carpishin no mean anything to you? Uh, well, he's the writer, head writer for uh, Anthem, Bioware's new game. Mm -hmm. He wrote Knights of the Old Republic, mm -hmm. Mass Effect 1, mm -hmm. and Mass Effect 2. So the good ones. Mm, Mass Effect 2 is more of a collection of short stories than an actual coherent story. Really? Because everyone I, I talk to says Mass Effect 2 is like, if you're making a list of best games ever, Mass Effect 2 is on it. Mass Effect 2 is good, but compared to Mass Effect 1, it didn't feel like one overarching story it felt like hey here's a bit of the main plot uh go help your crewmates hey we're back to plot well either way he wrote them both so if you prefer one he still wrote that one yeah uh now i've said it before I, i've never played mass effect but he wrote the books too and i i actually liked the mass effect books so this is this is good for me i, I like to hear this uh i guess in the interview they also said the game's gonna be kind of fantasy the trailer did not no, really fantasy, show that no but i guess okay so it was weird they said it's going to be sci-fi fantasy you know like star wars which is not that at all 
So, space wizards. <laughs> well, I guess if you look at it that way. But they definitely didn't show space wizardry. There was people in mechs with power suits. Well, I mean, there's people in power suits in Star Wars. I guess, but the magic part, the the fantasy part, comes with the Force. Yeah. No one had the Force in those trailers. Maybe there's gonna be some Jedi, or some off-brand Jet, some no-name Jedi. But uh, yeah, surprise, surprise, that game continues to look good. They're they're saying the right things. So what do you think about that four hundred and fifty dollar diva statue? Well, it's a, uh, it's worth the money. Is it? Yeah, it's what nineteen inches tall. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't buy it? No, I I draw like I have a price limit for figures. I have a a limited amount of space and like, like I get tempted, but I would not get tempted by four hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Only because there are currently things in my life that cost less than that that I'd rather have. If I had four hundred fifty dollars to spare, I'd probably buy a switch first over that statue and also not a diva main so like if a reinhardt one comes out you'll buy it um and it's a choice between paying rent eating or paying bills i'm gonna buy the reinhardt well i mean that is kind of the the benefits of a credit card is you can do both. But... No. No, I mean, I said it before. Like... If it's my main, like, I'll... I'll actually have to fight a little bit. Um, like, you brought my attention to it, but... You know, I had to put my money where my mouth is. They put out a Roadhog hoodie. And, uh, I have to buy it. Because I said I'm not giving them money until they put out Roadhog merch, and they have, so I have to buy it. I think I can get you a 10% discount on that. Yeah. Even if you can, it's just, I mean... I mean, the, the other part is the hoodie doesn't come out until, like, fucking November. November. Yeah, it's pre-orders. <laughs> but at least if where I'm buying the Roadhog one... I, I imagine I'm, like, one of eight people buying it, so, like, there's no chance of it being shipped late. It, if it comes out in November, I'm getting it in November. But some of those hoodies were very nice. I would like to see the other ones because it looks like yeah. they're going to make one for everybody. Probably. That's usually what Jinx does. <laughs> um, I'm kind of torn between the Reinhardt and the Diva one. I mean, for you, I'd pick the Reinhardt one. Yeah. As you main Reinhardt and I I've literally never seen you play D.Va I've played D.Va oh, no no like I'm sure you have yeah but not not but, <laughs> but not while we're playing yeah like I know we've all played everybody but N now that being said the D.Va one is very nice mm. I do like how it has little ads on it from our sponsors I like the I like the Widow one really yeah I do it's not a, the Odette skin, though. It's not, but I'm... I'm. Look, I can't... Beggars can't be choosers. I'm not gonna get an Odette skin hoodie. <laughs> ever. But, like, I, I like Widow, but... And I don't, like, love the Roadhog one, but... Again, it's... He, he's he's my baby boy, even though he's dead in the meta. So I, I gotta... Gotta give him some love. I was like, yeah, you're way too far yeah, away. Yeah, way too here. far away. Um, I don't know. I think when characters are off the meta, that's when they're the most potent. Well, because no one's going to pick them. Yeah, no one's going to pick them, and then people will forget how to deal with them. Now, that being said, I have yet to do my matches for Season 5 yet, so I, I don't know how much he's actually being played. Maybe it's still a decent amount, but... Well, well we're, while most of the group is either medium gold to high silver I can guarantee you that you don't have to worry about like Roadhog's still in the meta for us I've been, I've, I've been doing a lot of Zenny lately yeah Zenny's pretty strong right now I've been doing a lot with him been enjoying him a real real bunch uh so 
other than this last story, uh, I'm out. I told you, sh- sh- slow week. Oh, but, geez. uh... Not that this was a big shock, but I'm still ch- I'm still calling it I was right, because I, I called this last year. And, and earlier... Actually, no, it wasn't last year. It was a, a couple months ago. I said it on the podcast. That when they discontinued the NES Mini... I was like, that means we're getting a Super Nintendo Mini. And lo and behold, the SNES uh, Mini, Classic, Classic Mini or whatever the fuck it's called, uh, was announced. It's set to come out on the 29th of September. And before I go into the games, because this seems to be a weirdly hot, uh, weirdly heated debate. Do you call it the SNES or the SNES? I call or it the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I call it the Super I mean, if I was to be asked that question, I would also say the Super Nintendo, but I also just called it the SNES. So, I guess I use multiple. Uh, now, have you seen the game list? No, I haven't. Well, lucky you, I wrote the whole fucking thing down. So, it has 21 games. Oh, also, it's coming out for $80 US. Strangely, last I heard, which was two or three days ago... Pre-orders are live at almost the entire world, except North America, <laughs> which is very weird. Okay, so before I, actually before I get into the games, behind the scenes, Nintendo claims they're going to have more available. Yeah. But they claimed that with the Switch, and that is not true at all. So, uh... Well, I mean, Europe's gotten double, gotten double the stock. Yeah, but double nothing is still nothing. <laughs> Jesus God. If you go from, like, there were some places that were getting three or four a store, and to go from three or four to five or six, that's, you know, nothing. That's still nothing. But okay, so the games are, and I'll say it's a, it's a good lineup. Could be better, but it's a good lineup. Contra 3, Donkey Kong Country, Earthbound, Final Fantasy 3, it's still up in the air if they mean three or six. Nobody knows. Uh, F-Zero, Kirby Superstar. Kirby's Dream Course, Link to the Past, Mega Man X, Secret of Mana, Star Fox, the unreleased Star Fox 2, uh, Street Fighter 2, which makes the full price Street Fighter 2 on the Switch pointless. Uh, Wait, Kef- Street Fighter 2 Alpha? Turbo. Oh. Uh, Castlevania 4, or Super Castlevania 4, uh, Super Goals and Ghosts. Super Mario Kart, Mario RPG, Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Punch-Out, and Yoshi's Island. That's a strong lineup. That's a pretty strong lineup. Shit. Now, you said F-Zero and then Kirby, and I was like, I'm sold. Now, the uh, the Super Nintendo is probably where you and I both started our gaming. Like, I, I played the NES first, but it was more like, I'm bored after school. I need something to do. The Super Nintendo, when I was just, you know, when I was actually getting more into yeah. games. Now, for me, there's only, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six games that are worth a damn to me. But, so there's 21 games. I don't care really about six of them. But I probably haven't played at least ten of them. So, you know, if I ever could get my hands on one, maybe I'd play games I have never t- played before. Because, uh, but yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about the Super Nintendo. Let's talk about our gaming days of of, of years past. Mine didn't start till the N sixty four. Well, mine really didn't start to the PS2, but... I mean... <laughs> but I was Like I said Nintendo. in one of the earlier podcasts, my first gaming memory was sitting on my dad's lap as he gave hookers from Duke one of the Duke Nukem games money. You have such a weird childhood. <laughs> that and, Legend, and him playing Legend of Zelda. So, okay, so I've never played Contra 3. I played the first one. Yeah. Uh... Dunk Country, I like that game a lot. I've never played Earthbound. Uh, I've played Final Fantasy 3 or 6, depending on whichever one this is. I've played both of them. Never played F-Zero. 
Kirby Super Show is great. Kirby's Dream Course great. Link to the Past great. Probably, maybe, my favorite Zelda. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now, granted, I have not played all of the Zeldas. Yeah. But of the ones I've played, I think Link to the Past is my favorite. Never played Mega Man X. Never played Secret of Mana. I love Star Fox. Obviously, I've never played Star Fox 2. Street Fighter 2 is... Eh, it's Street Fighter 2. I love Castlevania 4. Never played Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, I recently... Recently, it was probably three or four years ago now. Replayed Super Mario Kart. It's fucking terrible. I mean, it's no Mario Kart 64. They're all bad. No. Okay. Oh, okay. That's not true. Okay, I, sh- I just state this. Unpopular opinion. I don't like Mario Kart. Is that why you like Crash Bandicoot, Crash Course, Crash Kart, Crash whatever? No, I, ju- I don't really care for most kart racing games. <laughs> wow. I mean, they can be fun in a party setting, because anything's fun in a party setting. Yeah. But I would never in a million years sit down and play Mario Kart. I mean, other than Mario Kart, the only racing game that I enjoyed was... Uh... What's that? Kirby one. There was a Kirby racing game? Yeah, there was a Kirby Oh, racing uh, game. Kirby's Air Ride. Kirby's Air Ride, yeah. It was fun. I don't like that game. I don't care for it. <sighs> look, look I, I am I am much hated in, in the Nintendo community. I don't care for Mario Kart, and I think Smash Brothers is a fucking terrible game. I hate all of them. I don't like Mario Kart. And but at least Mario Kart because I recently played the the Mario Kart Eight Deluxe or whatever it is called on the Switch. Yeah. And okay, so actually, let, let me talk about that version for a second. I played with motion controls accidentally. I didn't realize I had it turned on. Shout out to the Switch's motion controls; they're fucking fantastic. Holy shit! Well, I mean, when you they are it. so precise that I thought for sure. Okay, so you know how. That new Mario Kart has, like, the baby mode where you can't drive off the course. Yeah. I thought for sure I had that turned on. It was controlling so well. Did I win? No. But I was staying on course. I was driving pretty well. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I must have this off. So I purposely drove off a cliff to see if I could. I was like, no, these controls just work really well. When you have two failed... uh, (laughs) Or I shouldn't say the Wii was failed. But when you have two previous attempts in motion control... Yeah, it is... third attempt. Heads in... Like, because I've tried motion controls... Uh, on the Wii, and the Wii U, and it's, like, to make any amount of turn, you're, like, cranking it 270 degrees, and you'll move an inch, but this was super solid, and I had fun, but going, when they're still making Mario Karts, if you want to play Mario Kart, play the new one. Yeah. The old ones are, without a doubt, obsolete. You have no reason to play Super Mario Kart. Yeah. Ever. No, I just, play the new one. It's kind of like Persona, like playing the newest Persona game and then going backwards, because um, at the time I was playing uh, Persona Four a yeah. long time ago, and then I was like, you know what? I kind of want to replay Persona Three. I went back and I was like, oh, I can't do this. Well, there's certain games here that like, don't get me wrong. I think they totally still hold up, like. Um, uh, just because we're... I'll just go over games that I've already pl- uh, talked about. Uh, Donkey Kong Country is still a, a platformer. Like, platformers haven't really changed ever. No. So, there's an argument to go back. But when they're improving on Mario Kart, there's no reason to go that far back. So, uh, Mario RPG. I've never actually played it. And I would like to. Yeah. Be neat. Uh, Mario World, I mean, best Mario game ever. Uh, and, uh, mm, I don't know. Making some bold claims. It's a toss up. Mario 3 or, or, or uh, Mario World, it's it. Oh, Mario 3 was pretty good. No, exactly. When I think Mario World, I'm like, oh, that was my favorite. And then I go, mm, Mario 3 is pretty damn good, though. Yeah. Uh, but again, also, I haven't played a Mario game since Mario 64, so. And a lot of people would argue they've improved. <laughs> yeah. No, wait. I played that one. I played New Mario Brothers U. 
on the Wii U where the person with the Wii U tablet could just put down blocks and kill you. So, again, it's fun as a party thing, yeah. but... It's Super pretty old pretty quick. Uh, Super Metroid, I've never played Metroid game in my life. Uh, Yoshi's Island is good. And uh, Super Punch-Out uh, might be the best game on that system. So No, that's heavily, heavily biased right there. Yes. I like Punch-Out a lot. <laughs> I don't... Well, and I think it's because I have so many memories of, like, me, my brother, and, like, a few neighborhood kids just trying to beat Punch-Out. Of, like, rotating the controller to try and beat Bald Bull for the hundredth fucking time. And so I, I, I just, you know, that game is near and dear to my heart. That's why ARMS looks good, because it's the closest thing I'm going to get. <laughs> it's the closest thing you're ever going to get. And I've actually been watching a lot of ARMS gameplay in the last week. Because a couple, uh, multiple Let's Players I, I, I watch have put out videos on ARMS. And, I don't, I got, I got beef with it. I got a little beef. I don't feel like it has the Nintendo polish. Like, that, that's what Nintendo's known for, is yeah. some real polished stuff. I don't think ARMS has it. Okay. And the one thing that really bothers me, and I'm sure this bothers other people, too. It, I hate that every character has the same super move. I don't like that. Oh? I feel like every character should have their own. Like, I don't know what everyone's would be. That's not my job. But everyone in Overwatch has their own alt. Why can't Nintendo with half, less than half the roster give everyone their own? So what, what would you want? I don't know. That's for them to figure out. Everyone, okay. You, okay, you know what to bring it back to Super Punch Out? Every villain, own alt. Different alt. They all have different alts. And Super Punch Out! It's 90 years ago. It's Not in them 90. to. It, it's in them to it's know how to do ago. it. 90 years ago, 90. Super Punch Out came out. On The Rock. <laughs> no, I'm just. Like, what would, like, for one of the characters, the Noodle Girl, what would you have for her all? I don't know. I have no idea. That's, so, not, that's not my job. So you want them to have your own, their own alts, but you don't have an idea as to what they'd be. No. You, they, they just should have their own alts. Yes. And you can't give them an example. No. Of anything. I mean, if no one in Overwatch had alts, could you give me their alts? It's a very hard question. <laughs> Um, no, it's not. <laughs> Winston's would be Banana Slammer. Oh, Jesus Christ. And just a track from the intro to Donkey Kong Country, but <laughs> where it's like, hey, yo, Donkey Kong, let's... and he'd just start throwing bananas everywhere. I it would know. be much like Reaper's alt. Like, the alt they have is, is it, they all have a basic bitch alt. So, like, okay. give that to, uh... What's the main character? Spring Man? I don't know. I know it's Ribbon Girl and... Is it Spr oh, I'm going to say Spring Man. Okay, Spring Man it is. We're going with that. <laughs> like the, like, I don't know. Like I haven't the, watched anything from ARMS. Like, that's fine. It's a final. Because it, it in itself is fine. It's just that everyone has the same one and it makes it not fine. Because, it, like, if you've seen it, it's just JoJo's Aura Aura. Like, that's all it is. Oh, okay. It's just you, you punch a bunch. I'm like, oh wow, that's a uh, boring as shit. It's basic bitch alt. Min Min has a fucking dragon. Yeah. Let her summon a dragon or something for her alt. Let let Twintel smother someone to death in her ass cheeks. What about a uh, crazy flapping? Fun noodle guy. Where? The green. Uh, oh, Helix? The Helix, green guy? Yeah, the green guy who looked like that one uh, Family Guy skit where it's like the flapping arm. Fl oh, flapping. 
Flat fin inflatable arm flailing tube man? Yeah. I don't know. Get him to... I mean, he seems like a Kirby type. I mean, he's DNA. That's what he is. He should just... I mean, his alt would be like, just copy the opponent. Take their alt. And then you play, and then you kind of Kirby them for like a few minutes until the alt wears off. I don't know. Like, that's one of those things that I... I just would expect that from Nintendo. Missile barrage from the robot girl? Yeah, sure. Be neat. Yeah. Just fucking... Her... She retracts the uh, punching arms, and then po- out pops, like, Gatling cannons well, yeah, okay. so and that, assault that rifles, is... and <laughs> then just... Her shoulder panels open up to show, and rockets kind of pop out. That is her n- chest. The chest of her robot opens up, and it's just like these Gatling cannons, and it's just big guy and rusty. No, see, that's no real different than the Colonel, right? Of uh, there's just a bunch of punches flying at an ungodly speed. Just make hers missiles, and that's suddenly a cool alt. But no, they all just have the oh, I'm just gonna punch a bunch. And it's, it's dumb. Give them their own alts. You know what needs to be rebooted? Big guy and Rusty. You know what needs to be rebooted? Punch out. <laughs> Where everyone did have their own alt. Even Little Mac. That being said, I love Little Mac. I don't like the Super Punch Out version. He looks like a dork. Oh. Well, I, I actually, actually don't actually know if it's Little Mac in Super Punch Out. <laughs> but he's just, ah. Uh, He's got this dumb voice, and, like, I'll chalk that up to it being the Super Nintendo. Yeah. But I hate it so much. Every time you win, you do this weird turn and arm raise, and he's like, yay. And I'm like, oh, my God, I hate you so much. That being said, I really want to play ARMS. Yeah. I want to touch it myself. You you want to get your hands on it? Yeah. Just rub it down. I want to get my arms on it. Well, I mean, we start, we uh, get on those uh, Twitter feeds and uh, start calling up EB and be like, hey, you got any switches this week? Uh, I, I'm more than likely, uh, like, I'll just go to someone's house who has it <laughs> and try it. Oh! So I, I get really mad that uh, the Switch was getting the only physical version of Binding of Isaac. Yeah. Because, uh,. That's a game I love to death. And yeah. was playing it again this morning for like an hour or so. It is coming to PS4. And I'm a very happy boy. So now I don't have to buy... Because I... I was in GameStop last week. And I picked... Like I was holding you, the Switch copy in my hand. And I was like, I might just fucking buy the Switch copy. Even though I don't have a Switch. Just so I own a physical copy of this game. And then God came down and said... Wait, it's hold, coming to PS4. Hold my child. And so now, now I'll just wait and buy that version instead. And as far as I know, it is the uh, complete version with the DLC. I do not have because it uh, is only on the PC currently. Well, and the Switch because the Switch has the most complete version as well. Horseshit. So it's got Afterbirth and. Well, well, it's Afterbirth Plus is the oh. last DLC, and then the guy came out and was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I want to make new games, please. I want to make anything else." Yeah. Which, he showed off his new game. Probably two or three weeks ago. Now. I didn't mention it because I it didn't strike my fancy, and I doubt you'd like it either. It because it's less like Isaac, and I get if you want to make a new game, it's not going to be like Isaac again. But it's, uh... Fuck, I don't remember the name of it. But it looks like Super Meat Boy. So it's back to that style of thing. But there is a, a character in Binding of Isaac who's getting their own spinoff. Uh, who is everyone's favorite character. A uh, Bumbo. Uh, called Bumbo's Quest. And I'm excited to see when that comes out. Now if only Bethesda could get off Skyrim. No. I, I almost bought Skyrim. What?! I almost did. I almost bought it in 2017. For the PS4? Yep. It's out for the PS4? Skyrim VR. 
I mean, I mean, because that's what I want. I want a full game. Yeah. In VR, and like, is Skyrim a great game? No, but might it be great in VR? Yeah, it might be. Did you know it only took eight people to do all <laughs> the dungeons in Skyrim? Because I know he's listening. I won't steal his joke. Oh, but he'll care. know. He'll know we remember that <laughs> conversation. That was my favorite conversation ever. <laughs> just overhearing that and then just... the Oh, it was beautiful. So, I, I gotta ask because... Uh, you know, it was a, a thing you and I both did. And it's something that... Uh, it's been longer for you than it has for me, but it's still been a, a while for me. Is is we went to a concert last night? Yes, we, we went, went to, to see dead, we went to see Dead Mouse. It is Dead Mouse. It is Dead Mouse. He didn't wear his helmet, which was kind of disappointing. Yeah, that's the only thing I fucking cared about. And you said, now did you see him take it off, or you just saw that he didn't have it? I on? just saw he didn't have it on. Okay, that that makes me feel a little better because if you saw him take it off, it means we missed it by a few minutes. Now yeah. I get it; it's probably hot as hell in that in that helmet, but. Yeah, like I literally. That's the only. Like reason. I didn't care. I was like, I want to see the stupid head, and then I'll leave, and I didn't. He wasn't wearing it, was, so there's no proof it was evil. I mean, that giant box thing he was on was pretty neat. Yeah, he had like a like a a cube built with projectors on it, and it was it was a, visually a cool show, but unfortunately his opening like, I don't Couple know. Songs. I mean, we were there for what thirty minutes. Were Listen. We? Three yeah. songs. No, we were there for like five songs. We were there for really? one. Really? Yeah. It only felt like three songs. <laughs> you no, know, because I remember having the thought of one more song. If it's not any better, we'll leave. And uh, we'd listen to two or three after that. Uh, but yeah, he... Like, he, he's an alright uh, artist. He's got some, you know, hip-hop and beats... But, uh, boy, was he like, let's just play, play the, the slowest, slowest things in the world and put everyone to sleep. It's like I was saying last night. If Cold like, this guy, he, for me, he's just about, just above Coldplay. For if I want to get to sleep, I'll listen to him. And Coldplay is like the music you throw on for someone who's already comatose lullabies for people who are already asleep. If, if you want to wake up someone in a coma, play Coldplay, because they'll get up and turn it off. Yeah. But, um... I don't do well in crowds. No, that was very... Because was... when I was like, let's go closer, and you went, uh... <laughs> Um... Holy shit, all of Halifax was just in one place, and I kept looking back behind us, going like... Any minute now, any minute. Yeah, you. you Someone you, would just open fire. I mean, you were a little on edge, but we also weren't helping each other because we were both pointing to things that were like, there, "There's probably someone over there." And then we saw someone taking pictures off their balcony, and we're like, "Did you see that sniper muzzle flash?" Yep. Oh god, it's hot. It's not bad. I don't. I don't feel too bad today. But I no. mean, it is hot. Though. No, we didn't help each other's situation no. going, oh man, at any minute, something's going to explode or someone's going to start firing into the crowd. And then I just kind of sat there and was like, wait, is that my actual fear or is that just what I would do? Now, so all in all, it ended up being pretty tame, but I stayed out a little longer than you. Yeah. I mean, we parted ways at like... 11 o'clock? Sure, I wasn't, pay- I wasn't paying attention to it. Was it was 11.22 when we left. And then I was like, yeah, no, I forgot I put in laundry in the dryer. So I was out until like 1.30. Okay. So not, I mean, two hours isn't that long. But, oh boy, did downtown start falling apart. I have never seen that many cop cars. Oh? It was fucking chaos. Just people trying to get out of the city, or pedestrian, or just people... All of the above. Oh. Traffic was a nightmare. Everyone was drunk since 7 in the evening. Since since well before 7. Well, that's true. Yeah, people... I, I started seeing drunk people at 3 in the afternoon. Like, fuck. Uh, now, I did go to a pizza place that I was 
I didn't end up getting anything. Because I shouldn't have. Because our, our friend was like, I don't really want pizza. Even though we were in line to get pizza. And I really did. Because it looked amazing. No, I'm glad. But I, I made the decision of like, I want it. But I know I shouldn't be eating pizza. So I, I didn't. So we left. So good. What a nothing story. Well, no. I, I just wanted to point out that uh, it's the newer, newer, newest pizza place that opened up on Pizza Corner there. Yeah. Pizza Girls. It's, uh, I don't know if you've seen their slices, because you just go there and order a slice. Now, I heard they were big. Now, I don't, now, I thought they were, I don't know if you've ever a been there. A quarter of a pizza? Yeah, they're literally a quarter of a pizza, but it's like a 24-inch pizza. Oh, shit. It's a massive slice. And I was like, oh my god, it's like dirt cheap for that much pizza. I was like, oh no. So I'm going to have problems with that place. Because I'll go. Want to go get pizza after recording? I mean, I'm going to want food. <laughs> and I, it's good that it opened up next to a poutine place. Because oh, it is, it, it's at least... Better for me than Putin. Probably. I would imagine, even though it's a massive slice, it's probably still better than Putin. Now, I know I sent you this picture earlier in the week, but that Putin donut that uh, Timmy's was doing. Horseshit, Tim Hortons. Shame on you. They released, to anyone who doesn't stay hip with Tim Hortons menu changes, they added a Putin donut. Which was just their basic uh, jelly-filled donut, but had gravy just, just poutine. instead and fries and curds. And that was paired with the maple bacon ice cap for Canada Day. And this Canada Day menu item was only sold in the United States. Well, I mean, to be fair, um, Tim Hortons is owned by Burger King. Burger King now. Yeah, guess what? I don't give a shit. It was the Canada Day celebration. You know what they should do in return? You know what every American chain should do? All of them. McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. I don't give a shit. Every American chain should add a 4th of the July Fourth of July menu item. Only sell it in Canada. Deep fried everything. This day only. Deep fry the whole menu. Deep fried mayonnaise balls? Yes. Because nothing's more American than a congested heart failure. I, well, I... Okay, so... I've talked about it before. I, I have a love for uh, cooking shows. It is my... Mm, I, I, I am borderline addicted. And, and I'm going to do a double segue here. I found a YouTube channel called Jun's, uh, Yun's Kitchen. Uh, J-U-N. Uh, oh my god, check it out. It's amazing. Uh, they're just cooking videos. But a, a show I watch fairly frequently is called Carnival Eats. Where I just see the worst of all American cuisine. And I have more than one occasion seen just deep fried butter. <laughs> Which is way worse than deep fried mayonnaise. I don't know. Ah, you're right. I don't know what's worse. You know how the, it, Maybe it, we'll have to make a poll. They have deep fried Oreos down the street right now. Did you know that? I don't like deep fried Oreos. Are you insane? Yes. They're amazing. I, I don't care. I enjoy my arteries unclogged and just free to pass blood throughout my system. He, here's where you and I are, are, are in our lives. Uh, you think that's a devil made concoction and I have made them myself. <laughs> yeah, and our body types. I have, yeah, they sure do. Duncan looks like a piece of bamboo, while I look like a half-filled bag of milk. But, yeah, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of food going around the city right now. Oh, yeah, Ribfest? Yep, Ribfest. That, well, that, that, that's where the Oreos oh, that's, are. Okay. Which was odd to hear. Weird pairing. A little bit, yeah. Um, Alright, yeah, the only other thing I did was I... Continued to lie to realtors uh, around the city that I can that afford. You, that you're super rich and that you uh, can afford 
thirteen hundred dollars. Thirty two. Thirty two hundred dollars. I can afford thirteen. I, I wouldn't want to. But I, it's in the budget. But no, yeah, it's I, in the budget. I, I convinced uh, an an older woman. She's probably like in her sixties. That uh, you're an internet. That mobile? I was looking for a penthouse suite. So I checked one of those out uh, on Friday. And, uh, this is becoming a problem. Oh, it sure is, because I, I, I have more bookings planned. But they don't know. But I'm so glad. I to- I started telling... Most people have been discouraging me from this behavior. Yeah. But a few people have uh, were like, go on. Go on. So I might... There might be a huge influx of people just lying to people around the city. <laughs> spawned from me. <laughs> You're just going to make a... Your little stories, yeah, oh, like it's little so stories much to get fun. in. Lie about your job. Lie about lie about everything. Lie about your age. Lie about where you live. Lie about what you do for a living. Lie about your past. Oh, it's so much fun. I'll do it to taxi drivers too. Now, I know this is probably as far from your mind as probably as possible. But do you think there's going to be any sort of you know legal Recompense? No. It can't be. I didn't sign nothing. Okay. So you're just... Okay. I mean, could I... Maybe in the future, if I'm actually looking to move into one of these buildings, then maybe a problem might arise. But... Only, like, one of these buildings would I consider actually moving into. Because it was, like, a little pricey, but... In the, like it's at the end of what I'd be willing to pay, but it is still in that range. Okay. So that guy, I'm gonna have to tell the truth to maybe. But uh, oh, I guess we should do some uh, channel talk. I actually have. Oh, you got some shit. I've got some, good. Good. I'm out. I've got. I've got some mailbag questions. Oh no, you from- don't. That's a no. That's a damn lie. Because I checked the mailbag before we started recording. Because I have my own sources, Colin, that I keep separate. If from if you. they don't email the podcast, it is not a podcast question. Um, Kaoru Moose mailbag, right there. Just because you make a <laughs> article, on, a memo note on your phone, and call it the mailbag, this, we have a email this, address. This. This comes in from one of our listeners, Matt. Yes. Who's been very helpful in the past. He has. He does a much better job at my job than I do. Yeah. Um, why do you think people get so salty about video games? They're just games. Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that question. You don't? Because I definitely do. Yeah. I get... Okay, so I'm not the worst person we know. Because we know people who have legitimately broken things. Yes. In rage. That is neither of us. Yeah. I usually just tend to get very depressed and... Oh no, I have mind throwing the controller. And one day it will slip from my hands. And I will break it. Yeah. But... I, I can't... An- I mean, it's just you're invested in it. Yeah. So... Uh... I mean, the, t- the top, for me... It- it's a tie between two things. Is... Bi- like, Binary of Isaac will wreck me. I... Hate that game. As much as I play it, I hate it. Because if I die, and I know the death was stupid... Like I was holding forward... And I just walk into spikes or something. Something like that stupid. That will piss me off to no end. And that's because I'm mad. I'm not at the, mad at the game. I'm mad that I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, if you're playing... Even if I'm... Actually, even if I'm just playing arcade or quick play in Overwatch. Let, like, it doesn't even have to be comp. If I see my teammates fucking about, I will get furious. And I don't care if I win or lose. But I at least want my team to try. But I can't tell you 
the uh, I don't remember having any particularly large freak out before um I don't know if you I have think any the earliest memory I had of me ever being salt super salty about a game is when I purposely stayed home sick mm -hmm. from school to beat Diddy Kong Racing I spent all day fighting or racing um, the final form of Whizpig. Yep. Beat it after many tries. <laughs> and every time I lost, it would be like, okay, it's my own fault that I'm losing because I'm making stupid little mistakes. And it wasn't that I was getting angry at the game, I was getting angry at myself. For not being a, for not being better, yeah. because I had run the course God knows how many times, and I don't think it's I'm getting salty at the game. I'm getting salty at myself for continuously not getting it right when I just done it over and over. And much like a couple weeks ago when I had spent sixteen hours fighting Pontiff Sullivan, only to just say, "Fuck it." summon up one of the spirits and then they pretty much killed him well okay himself. so I think that's what separates and now like for a question like this it would be better actually we can just say it well, I'll fucking call his name out on, on, uh, on the podcast because he's been on the podcast uh, our, our friend Anthony uh, Touch of Grey is a, is a real piece of garbage <laughs> when it, when I mean, it comes to his, well when it comes to his salt at video games and he, he'll admit it if you're watching his current Dark Souls videos it's very apparent. He does not hide the fact that he is a he's a salty boy. Now, do you think that's just an act, or do you think I think some of it's an act, but also he has broken yeah accessories, so I don't think it is all an act. I uh, mean, I was just well, trying we played to play. Overwatch with him on this channel. Yeah, you've heard him. Yeah, he's a salty boy. So I, I wish for this question we had him here because I think the difference between him and I is he or us us both and him is I think he gets mad at the game he feels slighted by the games when we internalize it and go we're the problem yeah we're not good we need to be better I, like I said I, I, I have been put into you know a salty mode from video games before but when it's so so bad I do just get depressed. There was one time I just went to bed. It was like 3 in the afternoon. I was like, I'm going to bed. Now, that is not to say I haven't been mad at the game before. Because there are moments in Dark Souls 3, when particularly in Arch Dragon Peak, when you're fighting the uh, lizard people that have the axes on chains. Yep. Yeah. And I'd gone like, okay... I can't fight this guy right now. I ran back into this little bonfire room, and I was like, I'm safe. And then all of a and I was hiding behind a wall, and then all of a sudden, the axe hit me from through this very thick wall. Yep. And then he pulled the chain back, pulling the axe back, and it hit me again. And I was like, Dark Souls is a fair and balanced <laughs> game. And then just chanting that over and over again... It's like that game is jank. It can't, I wouldn't say the game is jank. It just can be broken. Yeah. But as a whole, I think it's pretty alright. I don't know. When you have the enemies colliding through the environment. Okay, so 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 I'll ask, because I, I know mine very clearly. Is the Diddy Kong one the worst ever? No. Okay, what what is your worst? And for me, this wasn't anger. This went past anger, and this was, I'm going to bed. I cannot live with this decision, and I hope I die in my sleep. Uh, when I was trying to do a perfect run of Mass Effect 2 on... Perfect being no deaths? No, no, none of the side characters dying. Okay. Um, I had it set on the high, on the, not, I think the highest difficulty? I can't remember. But I had beaten the game several times on lower difficulties, and then just every sub every, every subsequent gameplay, I'd crank up the difficulty. And then I think Jack got 
eaten by the swarm somehow. Mm -hmm. And it was three o'clock in the it was three o'clock in the morning. And I just had the controller in my hand and just flexed it enough that I could hear it creaking. <laughs> and a man and I just I just sat there like all night on the couch. Just, just staring just, at the wall. Just staring <laughs> at the the T V and wall. <laughs> just wondering what in the entire game I did wrong. Okay. So for me be be me. Okay. Two thousand nine. I don't know you in two thousand nine. No, I know you don't. We didn't meet until twenty eleven. But two thousand nine. I've had my I don't remember exactly when in two thousand nine, but I remember it was two thousand nine. So I've had my PS3 two and a half or three years, depending on when in the year it fell. Uh, still relatively stupid kid. I was, uh, you know, 15, maybe. And uh, just, you know, going through a bunch of shit, just trying to learn more about the PlayStation, even though at, at having had the console at that point, I, I should know everything about it. Yeah. And I see this button called restore defaults and I thought I don't know what I thought it would do oh and I hit no. it and I erased every save file I've ever had and that was I had the OG PS3 so I had I had lost PS1 saves PS2 saves and every PS3 save I've ever had because this was before the cloud and that was a uh, I'm going to bed I just stared at everything. I was like, it's all gone. What am I going to do? Um, so, getting back to the question, um, why do people get so video salty at video games? They're just games. I don't know if they're getting salty at the game no, itself. I, well, I think I said it. They feel slighted. Yeah. I think that's what causes it. If you feel... Something happened unjustly. I think that's why you get mad at it. Um, now, a lot of times, you're creating yeah, that situation. Like, you're creating the situation for you to think it's unjust. Like, if, if you can't beat a boss in Dark Souls, you're going to find some bullshit of, like, no, man, I was totally out of his way. But, like, you weren't. No. Um, so, shit like that. I, I think that's probably all it is. You feel... And, th and that like, that's why I'll get... Salty at uh, comp and Overwatch. If I don't have like especially comp, if one person is not doing their job, you feel slighted. Oh, yeah. The match, your match, is a wash because one guy's not doing his job. Yeah, like in one comp match, I had one Lucio player was hiding in the bushes away from the fight. Yeah, and I sat there just going like, "You're the reason this game is so garbage." Yeah, you're you're intentionally throwing this match. For no reason, you spineless fucking coward. No, exactly, and I, I think, I think that is the answer. I think if you feel slighted, you'll get salty. Yeah. Follow up. Oh, good. I was question. like, please tell me he has nine more questions. <laughs> By focusing on creating titles with a lot of shelf life, and that are uh, revenue generating machines, i.e. Anything with where multiple players is a significant part of the package, meaning specifically FPS, RTS, sports titles, MOBAs, and F2P games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are developers intentionally or unintentionally... Oh, I got that back. Unintentionally or intentionally in, enabling uh, toxic toxicity fuck, in their player base by un, <clears throat> unjustly inflating the egos of the players? I don't understand. I'll be, I'll be very honest. I Like, I understand the English of that question. Yeah. But I don't... I can't think of any example of a dev inflating anyone's ego. Well, 
unintentionally or intentionally. Yeah, but I, I don't get them doing it at all. Like that that to my knowledge, I can't think of a dev well, ever doing that. For example, but I'm sure there's an example in World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. You're the hero. Yeah, that's inflating one's ego. Not really. I just call that normal video games. Okay. You should have came with an example. Because I, in all honesty, don't fully understand the question. Okay. All right. Just... All right, let's, let's just try this again. Focusing on creating titles with a lot of shelf life that are revenue generation machines. Uh, so I'll, I'll ignore his examples. Anything with a long shelf life, MMOs. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say sports games because new sport games come out every year. Um, are developers unintentionally or intentionally enabling toxicity in their player by unjustly inflicting the ego's place? I'm going to say no. Like, They're not I don't really understand the question, but I don't think it's either. I think any inflation of ego is just because... Players. And I've said it before... Gamers are pieces of shit. We're all garbage humans. Gamers are the worst people on the planet. You know who's better? Nazis. <sighs> Jesus. I hate gamers. I hate them. I can't stand them. And like... And I, I should say, I, I feel there is a difference between people who play games... Yeah. Even if you play them a lot. And a gamer. Well, okay, it's sort of the, like, to compare it, I've got no problem with people who smoke weed. Yeah. If you smoke weed, that's totally fine. But if you're describing yourself and you would use the adjective, I'm a pot smoker, I'm like, you, I don't want to know you. Because that's not a real description of character. Just like gamer isn't. So if you're like, oh, hey, like, what are you like? And I was like, oh, I'm kind of a gamer. I'm like, well, it doesn't mean anything. Those people are garbage. I hate all of them. They're the ones that complain about Mass Effect 3. They're the ones who, every time there's a complaint, it's from those pieces I, of shit. I, I complain. Well, I you're complain. part of the problem, and I'm sure I am too. But I'm a hypocrite. No, I... Because, I, okay, I would love to answer this question better if next week or whenever send in an example. Because I can't think of any. But from my understanding of the question is if there's any sort of inflation of ego, it's entirely the players generating them, generating it themselves. I think I kind of agree with that because... Um definitely in games like world of warcraft you have people thinking well i'm the hero character i should be all powerful why aren't i all powerful why aren't i just having these legendary items just given to me yeah i'm the hero yeah I... okay so that that's a that's a two parter one i hate MMOs that give you the story of you're the hero. Because then you're like, who the fuck are these other 19,000 people that are currently on my screen? Yeah. So I think that's weak storytelling. I prefer it when the story is like there's a war or something, so it explains why there's so many people. But, yeah, I... I but at the end of the day, that's just video games. That's the tale as old as time that you're the hero. So, if a player thinks they deserve things for being the hero, that's... I think that's on them. So, I guess that... I guess, technically, that would mean that Dev is unintentionally doing it. Because they're just writing a classic video game story. Yeah. Just to have a story. But, and then, the, the fucking gamers just take it out of control. Now, you said they're worse than Nazis. Yeah. A gamer what? once sewed my dog to my friend's head. I'm combining a lot of things <laughs> into one statement there. Relatively unknown comic book hero. Yep. Quote, Dude. quote, dog welder. Yep. Cool. <laughs> dog welder was a gamer. 
Now, where do comic book fans sit? Okay. They're the same. They're the same people. Uh, there's people who read comic books, which you and I both do. Yeah. I can see your comic book from where I'm sitting. Yeah. And, like, I re- earlier was talking about one I was reading. But then there's comic book fans. And on more than one occasion when we've gone to buy comic books, someone will be like, oh, I'm looking for this issue. A reasonable question. And they'll be like, oh, here it is. And they're like, I don't want that cover. I want this cover. I'm like, who the fuck cares? It's the comic. Yeah, but I mean, what if I want the alternate? Nope. Don't care. What if I really... what Like, what if the other... Couldn't care less. ...is done by, a, uh, done by an artist I really enjoy. And I'd rather have that cover. Because he's an artist I prefer. <sighs> over the... I mean, that's a little different, but still, I wouldn't... I'd be like, oh shit, I wish I could've got that cover, but I still wouldn't. Like, I care more about the story. I'd buy the issue, and if I really wanted that cover... I would just order... I would then, at that time, order in that cover. And then... But I'd still buy the one I had in my hand currently. Like, there's a lot of comic book covers that... Uh, like like Batman vs. Elmer Fudd. I got the cover I don't like. Because there's two covers. There's one that looks like a, a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. Where Batman... Where it's Batman drawn more in, like... The Looney Tunes. Like, the Looney Tunes character. But there's another one where it looks like Batman in the animated series. Where, like, it's an outline of Elmer Fudd, uh, like, in a, like, classic hunting for rabbits pose in, like, the shadow of Batman. Very animated series-esque. I wanted that cover. Yeah, I'd rather have But I couldn't find it. Uh, So, guess what? I bought the other one. Doesn't change how good the comic was. I guess. And also, because of the nature of how I store my comic books, you can't see the covers. So, the cover's not a big deal to me. Fans are terrible. Fans of anything are garbage. Yeah. I mean, like that Mona the Vampire fan. You got it. I don't know if we can talk about that. Probably can't. (laughs) But the few people who listen to this podcast who know about it, they'll get it. I didn't see it in the news, which tells me I don't think we can talk about it. No. Probably shouldn't. But but that's enough hint that some people people will know what we're talking about. Yeah. Fans is crazy. Yeah. Fans are crazy. No, exactly. There is nothing... That I like, that if someone asked me to describe myself, I would use fan of blank. Because it's, it's not a character descriptor. So and, if you came to my desk at work and said, hey Duncan, describe yourself, and you just looked at the corner and saw all the pop Overwatch pop vinyls in my Overwatch jacket, and... Yeah, well you, like, you play Overwatch, but... It, like, you definitely like it more than I do. You have a lot of Overwatch merch, where I have none. But, if you were writing a dating profile or something, like something where you have to describe yourself to sell yourself to the hot young singles in your area, would you say, Overwatch fan? No. You wouldn't. You might. <laughs> but most people wouldn't. Maybe put in a Reinhardt catchphrase. Like, I, I... I don't even know if I'd put in video games. Honestly. Because, again, it's not a... That's not a... Everyone plays games. Yeah. Like, the, the studies show, gaming is fucking through the roof. It earns more money than movies now. And you wouldn't say, I watch movies. Because, yeah, so does everyone else on the planet. And now... Well, do you watch movies or do you watch films? Okay, if you watch films, that's a someone to avoid. Oh. Because that's an artistic snob. But it's the same, games to me are the same thing. You're like, yeah, I like to play video games. Yeah, you and everyone else. Even if even if your games are just a mobile game, so still video game. I know some people get heated about that. The mobile games aren't games, but I don't see how it's not. I did download a mobile game recently, and I am. I was hoping to have sat down and played it this morning, so I could give a little recap of it. Uh, but I uh, got up uh, unusually late for myself, so uh, I didn't have time. But it's the new Futurama game. Yeah. And it's not just like a 
Cash Cow. Like, this was written by Matt Groening. Has the original voice actors. Like, this is, like, hey, the show's canceled, but we want it to still make Futurama content. So I am actually interested to see what this game is like. Okay. Um, does, he, does he maybe have eight more questions? No. Shit. Unfortunately not. All right. So we'll, we'll go into the podcast talk then. Um, so the next... This week will be fine. Like this following week will be pretty standard. Yeah. We have a new LP starting Friday. We do? Yes. Snake Pass will finish on Wednesday. Okay. The last episode of Snake Pass will go up on Wednesday. Which means a new LP will start Friday. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but that kind of rolls into... Most of this week, if not all of this week, will be normal. Yeah. But the following... Six weeks... Gonna be a little different. Uh, because there, there are, are, are various things of like, next weekend you're gone. Yeah. And then the following weekend I'm gone. And the weekend after that I'm still gone. And then after that you're gone for two weeks. Yeah. So both of us are not gonna be around for uh, five or six weeks to, to sit down. So. We'll try and squeeze in a podcast where we can, but it's entirely possible that we'll try to not go five or six weeks without a podcast, but you might not get five or six podcasts in the next five or six weeks uh, because we just have various things. Um, I need a vacation, and that's where I'm going, and Duncan has things he also needs to do, so like, they're not shit that's going to move. Like, we're, I am leaving and he is leaving too. Um, so we might start a new LP. Hard to say. We, we do need to start one. Hmm. Um, but maybe we'll wait for a full LP until we both settle back down, probably in August at some point. Which is crazy to think about because it's only July 2nd. So we might, unfortunately... For everybody. Uh, go back to me doing solo videos. Smaller solo videos for a while. Uh, while Duncan is gone. Because uh, it's easier for our schedule for me to just play something by myself. To fill up the time that while I'm gone. Because I, I know you still don't feel super comfortable doing things by yourself. Not and really. I and I don't blame you. It's not easy. I'm not an entertaining person. <laughs> but I also currently semi have plans to maybe have a guest uh, LP. I don't know. It, but well, okay, it won't be a full LP if that does go through because I'll only have a few days with them. Yeah. So, but there might be uh, an LP that I do with someone who is not Duncan just for a... Because these next few weeks are going to be a little weird. Um, luckily, there are... Some games that I could play through again or haven't still haven't played. So there's like... There is shit we could do. Uh, yeah, saying that... Saying it all out, out loud makes me think maybe don't start the full LP until we're settled down. Because uh, it's better to just make filler content, probably, instead of starting one, having to stop uh, it, yeah. and then start it up weeks later. We'll just wait. I mean, uh, we could always record on the weekdays. I mean, we could. But we could. But we haven't. Yeah. We still haven't decided what we're gonna play yet either. Yeah. But we'll, we'll talk about that uh, off air for once because we talk about behind the scenes stuff too much. Uh, I did make a list of like things we could play. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's close enough. Good enough for government work. Um. 
But yeah, I, I guess we sort of had questions this week, and those were those were nice questions. If anyone else listening wants to send actual questions, well, I shouldn't say actual questions. Those were actual questions. Those were much better questions than are traps gay. Yeah. Uh, nah, 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 no, never mind, never mind, I thought that. Never mind, ignore me. Send questions to PowerMoosePodcast at gmail.com. Because those were, those were very good questions. Uh, and even even if they're just our friends, I don't give a shit. It's in, well, because like, I'm not going to think of that kind of question. No. I never would have thought of that. Um, maybe, maybe I should go through all of the questions I've sent podcasts that have never been answered and just send them back to us. <laughs> I actually might do that because I've sent a handful. Um, yeah. To to be a, a a bit of a whore about this, you know. L- like the video, comment maybe. Our comments are down in the stats, so I'd like to bring that back up a little bit. Uh, all of our all of our links are in the bottom. Uh, so even if you don't listen to the end of the episode, you can still see. Uh, Because at the bottom has our Twitch, where uh, if Duncan's playing, we play on his Twitch. If I'm playing, we play on my Twitch. So anytime we are streaming Bloodborne, it's on Duncan's Twitch. Uh, Anytime we're playing, well, any anything else other than Bloodborne currently will be on mine. And then our Twitters are down there, and uh, I think my Tumblr is down there too. Quality stuff over Uh, on the Tumblr. The Tumblr on the Tumblr. You gotta, you know what? I'll give a a peculiar shout out for anime of the week. Uh, shit. What was that show we were just watching? My My Hero Academia. I was gonna say that, but that sounded too much like Little Witch Academia, and I was like, that can't be right. But yeah, watch that. It seemed neat for the eight minutes I watched. Tournament arc! <laughs> Bye! Oh, it's not stopping. <laughs> <laughs>